They're they're shooting us, eating the glizzies because they think it's funny. <laughs> hey man, look at that cheese. Yo, it's 2021 and almost everything is expensive. You got sneakers, $900. You got iPhones that are $1,100. Massage guns, $600. And you got vitamin gummies for almost $20. But actually not all of these items have a more affordable alternative except for outfits and clothing. So big shout out to Fashion Over Men's for sponsoring this video today because I'm gonna be showing you three classy menswear outfits that look a lot more expensive than they are. I'm talking about the same look and as little as 10% of the price. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna help you save money, I'm gonna help you look good, and I'm also gonna show you some really, really trendy Korean street food that was popping up all over the city. And if you're into all those three things, make sure you hit that like button, and let's get into outfit number one. Okay, outfit number one, we're gonna call this the YSL outfit because this camel long coat, the YSL version of this is $3,300, but at Fashion Nova, it's only 60. Guys, as you can see, it actually has the same color and similar fit. I have a black t-shirt right here. I have these gray sweats, also from Fashion Nova, only for $30. All right, if you do the math, this coat is $60. The East Saint Laurent one is $3,000. So that's about 1 50th of the price. What I personally like about this outfit, it is very, very 2021 to mix athleisure with high streetwear and very high-end luxury brands such as this. You know, if I want to take it a little bit more street, I can untuck the chain. Obviously, I can dress it up with the Travis Scott ones. You're never wrong for going with a pair of all whites in New York City. You know, especially if I wanted to layer it with a black hoodie, I think that would be also very cool. Or if I wanted to K-pop it up, a black turtleneck. So you can either get this outfit for $4,000 or you can get it for less than 100. You guys do the math. All right, guys, so I did a quick, you know, add on to this outfit. I put on this RJ denim wash jacket in a size medium. Guys, I gotta tell you to be honest, this actually would be a crazy expensive outfit. So I found a comparable denim jacket from Amiri for $1,600. If this outfit is all the luxury pieces that it can be, you're looking at about a $5,000 outfit. Outfit number two. Outfit number two, the R&B singer. Okay, so I have the denim Sherpa jacket. I have a off-white turtleneck. I have these khaki tan joggers here. The expensive version of this outfit, this turtleneck is $200. This Sherpa jacket is at least $200. And these joggers are at least $100. So you're looking at a total of $500 for this outfit alone. But the Fashion Nova men's version, this Sherpa jacket is 50. You got the turtleneck for 23. And then you have the joggers for 30. This whole Fashion Nova outfit is the same as just maybe the joggers would be from another brand. Do I feel like I'm an R&B singer right now? Yeah, rolling down, you know, the drop top in slow motion. David, when was the last time I wore a turtleneck? When you were four. Honestly, this outfit is music video approved. You can either get this outfit for five, six hundred dollars or one hundred dollars. You guys do the math. Okay, for outfit number three, I'm gonna call this the Jared Leto. I look like a Hollywood star right now. This herringbone jacket could easily be $500, this t-shirt would easily be $50, the jeans easily $200. I mean, you're looking at, what, a $750 outfit at least, if these are the luxury brands that we're talking about. Here at Fashion Nova, this whole thing is $100 because this jacket is 60, the jeans are 40, shirt is 10. This outfit works perfectly in New York because of the amount of black in it. These arms are pretty big so that you can uh, layer it with hoodies and other things really nicely. I do like the herringbone pattern. It is very classy. It's definitely a pattern that I've never worn before personally. Overall, this is just a solid outfit. Look, I even got the little black smudge on my chucks. Let's go. Outfit number three. Guys, you could pay $800 or you could pay $100. Your choice, you let me know. You know, this isn't really my style, but I'm gonna try it on. Let's do it. Hey, fake it till you make it. All right, everybody, so I just showed you how to dress like $1,000 while spending only $100 here at Fashion Nova Men's, but now I'm about to show you how to eat good because we're gonna go try these Korean hot dogs. I'm here with our resident Korean friend, Dan. <laughs> All right, Dan, you gotta go get changed before we try these Korean hot dogs. All right, Dan, we are dressed like some up-and-coming K-drama stars. 
You ready to go get these Korean hot dogs? Let's do it. All right, we are outside of OK Dog on Ludlow. They just opened up and there's so much hype around it. They are serving the Korean rice hot dogs. The main difference from like the traditional American corn dogs and hot dogs is that there, there's usually a batter of uh, sugar put over it and then there's mozzarella cheese and stuff inside. So I'm excited to try it out. I never had it in the city. Yo, how do they say this in Korean? Like, what do they call this? Hot dog. <laughs> hot dog. Hot dog. Korean, Korean hot, hot dog. dog. I love how this stall is giving you that real street food, street stall vibe. As you can see, there's a line, it's super hype. Man, I mean, I, I hope it's successful. They also have egg toast, which I'm also looking to try oh. too. Those are like the egg sandwiches. Those are also very popular. All right, guys, we have our very nicely packed box of OK Dogs. Oh Whoa. my God. Yo, man, I'm not even gonna lie. I don't know exactly which one I have. I think this is the potato mozz. This is the classic. This is a squid ink. Yo, this is a crazy kind of like flavor explosion in your mouth because it's savory, it's fatty, there's sugar. OK Hot Dog. It feels like you're almost biting into a breaded donut filled with cheese and, uh, and mozzarella. This is really good. Hey man, look at that cheese. All right, our next round of hot dogs here. You have the potato mozzarella one. That means there's essentially little bits of like home style fries or French fries chopped up and fried on the outside. Yo, I think it's really interesting how Koreans do a really good job of like putting their twist on like a lot of American classic snacks. Corn dogs haven't been this cool in a while, so shout out to them. Mm. Oh. Whoa, that's crazy. They're they're shooting us eating the glizzies because they think it's funny. <laughs> hey man, look at that cheese. I think I got the classic one. This is good, man. The dog inside is very, very flavorful. I prefer this over than just having cheese in the middle. This is holding together surprisingly well. You can definitely taste each individual fry on the outside. It's cold outside. We're outside of a food stall. We're eating Korean corn dogs. We're kind of dressed like B-list Korean pop stars. Yeah. Does it feel like Korea? It does. It does feel like Korea. All right, our next items up here at OK Dog are actually their egg toasts. And this is actually something I could probably see myself eating more often than the hot dogs. In my hand is the beef teriyaki one with sliced egg on top. It's on a garlic butter toast bun. It's split down the middle, so the bun is actually still connected. And it's just kind of stuffed in between, kind of like a bread pita, or, you know, just kind of like a, one of those clamshell buns from Shake Shack. Here we have the avocado egg toast. And uh, you can see like four thinly sliced avocados layered on top of the egg. Pretty simple. Looks really good and clean. Look how thick the bread is. That's, that's one of my favorite part of the Korean toast. It feels like Korean cafe culture is so aesthetic. Handcrafted, it's placed very carefully. It's almost like a toy. Korean, Korean egg toast. toast. Oh my God. Wow. Whoa. Oh man, this one, this egg toast sandwich with the sweet teriyaki flavor does actually kind of remind me of the corn dog in the sense that there's sweetness, there's savoriness, there's saltiness all in one bite. Honestly, I, I think I'd eat this more often. So in the avocado egg toast, you can see the egg is a lot more fluffy. It almost feels like a, it tasted like I was eating like an omelet inside of a sandwich. It was a, it was like a flavor punch in the face. It was super flavorful. And then the garlic bread just added a whole other element and the avocado, nice, clean, cold flavor after that. All right, so our next spot on this Korean street food crawl around New York is Rice Kitchen. We're kind of over in sort of the West Village, South Village area. It's started by a guy from Korea named Lee and this is his first like venture into food. Okay, we got our food here. Dan, what do you have we in have your hand? The bulgogi kimbap. Look at this. I've never seen it so thick. Look at the diameter. That is perfectly done. That literally looks like a picture. That looks like an emoji of a kimbap. All right, here we have the Korean inari, which is kind of the tofu skin wraps where it's fried tofu and you stuff it with rice. So this is a pork bulgogi. This is mushroom. This is egg. And this is vegetable. Korean, Korean tofu. tofu. Oh my God. All right, guys, this is the beef bulgogi kimbap. Oh, I'm getting flashbacks. What? <laughs> my childhood. It's that scene from Ratatouille. <laughs> this is so much better than the sushi burrito. It's, uh, it's easy to eat, it has everything you need in one piece. Well, I'm not gonna lie, these are pretty good. Definitely better than the sushi burrito. Yeah, I like sushi yeah. overall better, but it's not even comparable, man. This is good. All right, guys, so for our third and final spot of our new Korean food street food crawl with Fashion Over Men's 
uh, we're at the Woo. This is your high-end Korean spot. Now, the first spot we went to before, OK Hot Dog, that was for the young kids, you know, the kind of boppers, but just the younger generation. And then Rice Kitchen, right, which is actually right behind us, that was actually a very nice lunch food spot. You know, supposed to appeal to Asians and non-Asians alike. And then here at the Woo, this is a sit-down, nice, like, kind of dinner spot. And this is definitely, you know, done in a modern way. As you can see, aesthetically, they're putting leaves underneath calamari and the UK here is is done looking so aesthetically pleasing. This is crazy. I've never had Korean food at this level. Okay, so here we got the sea bass kimbap. It's a fried piece of sea bass wrapped up. You have this wasabi apple soy dip right here. Um, I mean, this is just kimbap on, on another level. Mmm, okay. Oh, wow. It does taste kind of like a sushi roll, like a fried fish sushi roll. So it is good, but definitely like, uh, didn't really have the crazy flavors that I was expecting. I think putting sea bass in the kimbap just shows you the potential for dishes like this. All right here, I got the Korean pancake. This is one of my favorite things to eat. This is called the pajun. I got the seafood one packed with lots of scallions. I got the Korean fried calamari glazed in some sweet and sour sauce, it looks like. That's not a cheap pancake, Andrew. Can you taste the not cheapness? Yo, oh my God, you gotta try this. It's like, it has like a nutty flavor. Oh man, that pancake was really good too. I've never had anything like that. Take a look inside. Look at that. See that? Woo, woo. Oh my God. You're saying the name of the restaurant? Woo, woo. The spice in there is really good. And then I think Koreans have like some of the best appetizers around. <clears throat> this is the best Korean pancake I've ever had in my life. What? In my life. Even though this place is kind of catering to a different type of crowd, they might not be all Korean. I think kimchi is the one thing that stays consistent at these restaurants. And you can definitely judge a place by the first taste you have of their kimchi. I'm, I'm more of a leaf guy. Okay, I'm a, I'm a leaf guy too. <clears throat> oh, has a kick. I can tell their panchan is very clean and juicy tasting. Yeah. That's what they do here at the Woo. Woo! All right, last but not least, this is the Yukwe. This is the raw beef Korean tartare with the nice little oh. raw quail leg right here. Damn, Dude, you never had this? No. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Just like, uh, yeah, just mix it up. Just mix it up. And so we actually had this, David, at the Guangzhou Market. That's one of those crazy markets in Seoul that you can eat all like the live squid at and stuff. I've had cheaper versions of this before, but man, every time I eat a good version, I am always amazed because the beef is marinated in sesame oil and salt and all these other Korean seasonings and they really let it shine. You quit, quit raw, raw beef, beef and pear. Mm. I can taste, wow, is that Korean pear, the pear? Mm-hmm, the pear. I can taste it. That was good. That beef is cold wow. as <laughs> yeah. I can taste a little slushy. Yeah. Little slushy beef. <laughs> Guys, I think the woo is just uh, symbolic of how Korean culture is getting bigger, even in New York City. Obviously, it's big on the West Coast, I mean, also shout out to Fashion Nova men's because you know, if you shop on Fashion Nova, you can actually dress kind of like a K-drama or K-pop star. You just look like you broke up with your girl. I feel rich. <laughs> I feel rich. Ah. Shout out to Fashion Nova men's for sponsoring this video, guys. Check out all the links down below. That's where all the pieces are gonna be listed. Shout out to Dan, the resident Korean for being here. All right, everybody, again, thank you so much for watching that video. Hit that like button if you found it useful. Um, let me know in the comments down below. Number one, is there another Korean or Asian street food that you would like to see get more popular in America? Also, let me know which one of our outfits you thought was the best. So thank you so much for watching. Shout out to Fashion Nova Men's for sponsoring this video. And until next time, we out. Peace.